Hi everybody, my name's Sam. I'm here from IPY and NCPH at the OAH conference in Sacramento. I'm here interviewing Anthea from the California Historical Society. Um, we're going to be asking her a few questions today about her panel later this afternoon. So, number one, what are the three main takeaways from your talk that you want the audience to walk away thinking about? Well, thank you, Sam. It's great to be here with you in Sacramento um, on this sunny day in April. Um, great question. I think that they would be the following. The first, when you hear the stories of Juan Abriones, who was born in um, 1802 and died in 1889, mm -hmm. you think of a woman whose life spanned the entire 19th century in California. So yeah. through indigenous, Spanish, Mexican, American occupation. So to think about what it's like to try and cr create that life or recover that life. Um, two, I'd like our audiences to think about how we can position public history projects mm -hmm. to incorporate as many of the familial branches of public history. And by that okay. I mean preservation, museum curation, um, archives, archeology, span um, how we then can kind of translate that into multiple forms, in this case an exhibition and a website, um, and yeah. actually recovery of artifacts that, that will live on. And then thirdly, I'd like um, people to really think about the ways in which nonprofits, um, universities, grad students, professors, curators, archivists, preparators, translators, designers, and artists can all work together um, okay. on public history projects. If you were preparing classroom materials to go along with your talk, what would you include in terms of historical events, primary and secondary sources, activities, and desired learning outcomes? Uh, another great question. I have, and my staff, have, have taught this in classroom in both undergraduate and graduate levels, yeah. and we're currently working on it for uh, K-12 curricula. So oh, I've awesome. been thinking a lot about this. Um, I think for the type of project we're doing with Juana Briones, where there's no photographs of her, there's no um, portrait of her in painting or oh, sketching wow. or anything else. She didn't write and she didn't read. So one of the key things for thinking about classroom activities, wh whether you're you know 10 or you know 80, um, is to think about how you can use artifacts, maps, manuscripts, written accounts, published accounts. Um, to really, and you know, accessory records and the, the kind of the very stuff of, of how we do modern history, when you have an invisible kind of African um, mestza, mestiza woman in uh, 19th century California. So we've thought a lot about what type of artifacts. Maps are amazing because yeah. many of the maps then for the early court cases, uh, Juana Briones battled and saved all three of her land grants that she had received from Mexico against the American courts. So there's a richness to those records, but there are also many of them are gorgeous. You know, there are mm -hmm. these hand-drawn maps, Ooh. you know, on vellum, mm -hmm. and and I think maps are a wonderful way in, especially when you don't have photographs, right? Mm -hmm. When you don't have the visual material. Um, we did a complicated transliteration and then translation of 19th and 18th century Spanish documents. So what that means is that we translated them from 18th century Spanish or, se or 17th century Spanish or even 19th century Spanish into modern day Spanish okay. and then translated those into English. Wow. So one okay. of the other things that we've done with classrooms, especially bilingual classrooms, is have the students who are profici more proficient in Spanish help the students who are less proficient and try to get to some of the nuances of the language. Um, so that's been a really great uh, takeaway. Um, and then I think to always weave into the classroom a public history perspective. Preservationists fought to save her house, what was left of her house, and, mm -hmm. we, and we lost. So one of the ways into the story is thinking about an 1848 building built by this woman and yeah. her, you know, her, uh, her ranch hounds, basically, who were Alone Indians. Um, and so for some kids and, uh, and lifelong learners, thinking about places or thinking about artifacts, uh, is really compelling. And then the third way in is that she left an abusive husband in 1844 when no one left an abusive husband. Wow. Okay. Um, and um, she started her own businesses. So she was an entrepreneur. She sold, you know, fresh milk to sailors who were coming into the teeny little hamlet of Yerba Buena, which would become San Francisco. Oh, wow. um, she was a curandera. She was a healer. 
Her sister was a midwife, so there's this wonderful story of healing and of birthing babies and of burying babies. And you know, so there's there's so many different ways in to a woman's life like this. So fantastic. Yeah. Um, question number three: yeah. How would you position this talk within the field of public history, mm -hmm. digital history, slash fill in the blank with what histories you want to interact with? Sure. Uh, whose work are you influenced by and building on? Whose work are you refuting? Mm -hmm. And uh, what impact do you hope this research presentation will have on the field? So really, like, what what conversations are you sure. hoping to have yeah. with the field? So it's a, another great question. We pick up on a number of histories of the past 25, 30 years, right? So okay. first, Chicano histories. Chicana and Chicano history, yeah. histories made by historians who are many of whom are at this conference, mm -hmm. who broke through the kind of hegemonic stronghold of how history was told and mm -hmm. who was history about, and so we build on that legacy. And Dr. Al Camarillo at Stanford is the kind of the guiding light of this project. Oh, awesome! So there is a reverence towards the kind of first generation, you mm -hmm. know, Gen One of Chicano history. Um, there is an awful lot of women's history here. Um, there's an awful lot of, I think, kind of path-breaking archaeology and understanding of geographies that, um, that certainly refute kind of an, an, an older kind of hierarchical sense of, of archaeology in particular and how it ties into the historical record. Mm -hmm. um, so that's been, that's been a really powerful um, uh, kind of effort in that sense. And then in terms of other kind of historiographical work, um, this project really tried to go beyond a plaque. And by that I mean if you've worked in public history and historic preservation and cultural mm -hmm. heritage, sometimes you feel like all of your work and all of this research gets boiled down into like a bronze plaque on a park bench where like one of Breonna's first home was, yeah. right? And so kind of really trying to go beyond that with digital media. So we used extensively digital media in this. One of the main um, products of the Juana Briones project is a remarkable website that has a lot of those primary sources, that has an integrated timeline, that's like the exhibition is completely bilingual. And so we tried to be very thoughtful about the ways in which the physical exhi you know, exhibition, which is temporal, right? It mm -hmm. gets packed up and put back in boxes, <laughs> right? And, but then with the digital um, component with the website, ideally if we take care of the website well, which is another form of stewardship, is taking mm -hmm. care of our born digital materials, then that too will have a life. Um, the show is actually traveling. It's being reconstituted oh, that's and, so cool. and, uh, and shown, I think, at least in two other places in California. Awesome. So, yeah. Awesome. Oh, was that, was that, did that help? Oh, yeah. that definitely, okay. like, there yeah. are a lot of conversations <laughs> you're talking with right now. Uh, so two more questions. Yep. Number four, how would you frame this presentation, or how will you frame this uh -huh. pre presentation and the work behind it for a public audience? Uh, mm -hmm. What public mm -hmm. audience would you present this work to if you could choose one or multiple? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I've talked about Juana Briones in the broader context of what we're doing at the Historical Society um, all over California and um, a little bit throughout the nation. Um, I'm going to probably present on her internationally a, as well, that's I awesome. hope, at an upcoming conference. So um, the frame, I think, the, the audience that the audiences I have spoken to, and then I'll get to ones I'd love to speak to, okay. um, have um, I think have been very receptive about trying to understand how focusing a project on someone like Juana Briones helps us to totally kind of reframe and retell an entire century worth of history, which is which is a daunting task. Yeah, right? it yeah. is. Um, if I had an audience, um, let's see, who would I really want to talk to? Um, in this day and age, uh, you know, I'd want to bring it to people who think that California history or American history or history in general is this relatively dry, storied, you know, mono path of a progressive, you know, mm -hmm. movement towards a, uh, a better future. Um, City on the hill kind <laughs> of <laughs> Oh, idea, God, right? totally, right? And to, and to help them realize, as James Baldwin that said about American history, that it's longer, larger, more varied, more beautiful, and more horrible than anything anyone has ever written about it. And especially with Juana, that she is a product of the frontier, of a Spanish frontier, um, whose veins 
you know, pumped blood that were an amazing mixture of cultures and races and ethnicities and identities and that California in particular, you know, my area of expertise um, is, as Baldwin said, you know, it's far more varied and far more complicated and far more diverse. And I mm -hmm. think we're in a, you know, it, with the with the resurgence of the comfort with many people have of European descent, claiming and reclaiming kind of white supremacy, mm -hmm. you realize that America's never, I mean, th that American mm -hmm. story is so narrow, you know, and American stories are so broad and complicated and um, there's nuance there. There's so much nuance. So I've given this talk in Bakersfield, oh, where cool. you see at uh, Cal State Bakersfield, literally in like the next pavilion they were setting up for Ann Coulter to come talk. Oh, wow. No, I'm not I'm not oh. fooling you. So <laughs> um, I thought a lot about what does that mean for me to start talking about Juana Briones and Ann Coulter coming to talk to, you know, Kern County Republicans. Um, I'd love to have a conversation with Ann Coulter mm -hmm. in a way. It's That's like, let's cool. talk about America. Yeah. You know, the America you see, the America I see as a historian. Um, That'd be fantastic. So I didn't think I was going to answer it that way, but yeah, I'm, I'll leave it with that. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that, that went in a great place. Yeah. All right, so last question. Um, how do your processes or methods change mm. if you're positioning your work in academic history versus public mm. and digital? Mm -hmm. um, for me, it's, it's a pretty straightforward answer is, is that they don't. Okay. I see our work at the California Historical Society and the historians and the archivists I work with as adhering to the most rigorous standards of research um, and applying those to projects, exhibitions, publications, uh, digital properties, that educational material and curricula that adhere to those um, same standards but perhaps don't have to always you know, mm -hmm. beat ups over the head with, mm -hmm. oh, we're adhering to these same standards, right? I think people have a very innate understanding uh, that we need to really work on um, to help them learn how to see and think and read critically um, and working with primary sources in particular, you know, is a, is a really awesome way to do yeah, that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right, well, that concludes everything we're going to be talking about. Thanks Great. so much for coming out. Oh, you're welcome. Awesome. Thank you.